Alright, hello Kucheng. How is everyone feeling today? Woo! Good. I hope you are feeling well today. I'm kind of nervous to be standing on this stage, being the first speaker. But I'll try my best to share a thing or two of my rugby journey, which I hope at the end of the talk, I will be able to inspire you guys to be the best in life. I am fortunate to be introduced to rugby at a very young age. It all started in 1997. I became best friend to Mr. Gilbert over here. When my father furthered his study in Bangor, Wales, I was only 10 at the time. And when I came back, after completing my UPSR, I went to Skola Alam Shah, one of the top playing rugby school in the country. Later, I furthered my study in New Zealand, the land of the mighty All Black. To say rugby shaped me as a person is an understatement. Rugby made me the person I am today. And now to be able to eat, sleep, and play rugby is beyond words and let me live the dream. We all know that sport is a good way of keeping you healthy and fit, and we all know that sport is good in instilling good values such as teamwork, discipline, focus, among others. But I'm not here to talk about all that jazz. I'm here to share with you six life lessons I've learned and discovered throughout my playing career for the past 20 years. It's all pretty basic, actually. Number one, the best thing in life are the least understood. All right, can you show a fan? How many of you have watched a rugby match before? All right, there are probably a quarter of you guys. Show of hand, how many of you have watched a football match? I think almost everyone in this room, okay? So I don't blame you guys for that. Rugby really rarely gets the attention from the mainstream media, be it a newspaper, radio, or even television. Some people even confuse between playing rugby and American football. You know those games with the padding? Even though rugby is quite famous at high school and university level, but due to economic factors and lack of professional league in the country, a lot of rugby talent have to stop play because it cannot consider as a career option. Hence, when I decided to quit my good paying job as a senior engineer from one of the largest IPP in Malaysia, after I got a call up to be part of the Sea Games squad in 2015, definitely raised a few eyebrows. I just took that leap of faith, not knowing what to expect and what are the outcomes. All I know that rugby has been sidelined for far too long. And this might be only chance to be part of the Malaysian rugby history. This is a photo of me and my teammate winning the silver medal. Obviously, we did not win the elusive goal that we've been looking for, but settled for silver. But because of this precious silver medal that we won, rugby finally got the attention and funding needed. And August 2017 this year marked an historical moment when my former teammate won our first gold medal in the recent SEA Games 2017. For some, quitting your good paying job seems crazy, but for me, it was one of the best things I did in my life. Number two, you've got to play through the pain. There'll be instant during the match that you will experience injury and pain. If you keep worrying on the slightest cut and bruise, you will get nowhere. This is a photo of me during a game against Philippines in Singapore 2015. Can you, odd, can you spot anything odd in this picture? I was actually playing with a broken index finger throughout the tournament, which I broke a few weeks before the trip. How did I survive? I strapped both my index and middle finger together with a spot tape, and that was the moment I got an idea to start my own brand, ATF Spot Taping. But let's save that for another day. I gotta be honest with you guys, there was instant during that game 
I was about to give up because I couldn't endure the pain. But I learned I had to fight through the pain because that might be my only chance for a SEA game victory. Having said that, rugby has definitely taught me that the best way to deal with discomfort and pain is to get back on your feet and try again. Number three, success comes from playing with passion. Rugby is definitely not a game for the faint-hearted. We put our body on the line, getting those tackles. It's hurt, but we do it anyway, because we love it. Same in life. In rugby, you got to put your whole heart to it, energy and passion. Since we're never talking of passion and love, have you ever noticed when a rugby player get hold on to the ball, they will hold on tight as close as they can so they can protect it with all their might against their opposition. Same goes in life. In relationship, if you love someone, you hold them tight, you protect them. If you don't believe me, you can ask, where's my wife? Somewhere over there. <laughs> All right. In rugby, rugby player may look rough and tough on the outside, but Sir Winston Churchill once said, rugby is a hooligan game played by gentlemen. So any single ladies out here today, you know where to go to. Rugby field, of course. <laughs> Number four, when you get hit hard, you get back up. This might sound cliche for some, but there'll be instant in those 80 minutes that getting back on your feet seems impossible, especially after those brutal tackles by your opponent. But rugby players just brush that aside, all the pain and discomfort, rushing back on their feet, ready to take over the process again. This same goes in life. There will be moments that it seems impossible for you to go through until you push yourself through that. There was instant back in June 2010 when I just got back from studying in New Zealand. I was playing in a, one of the exhibition games between NS Wanderers against a Hong Kong rugby club after helping my team making a try, I went for a tackle. During that tackle, the guy fell awkwardly on my leg. All right, this is a photo of me. And, the, and as a result, I got a dislocated ankle and a broken fibula. The repair includes inserting one plate and nine screws, and it's still intact until there. And I'm always reminded every time I'm at the airport, because every time I pass through that metal detector, it will keep saying, beep, 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 beep. The doctor told me back then I couldn't and shouldn't be playing rugby anymore. But I was adamant to not give up just yet. Learning to walk was hard. Probably one of the hardest things I ever had to do. But somehow or other, with much determination and hard work, I managed to get back on my feet and started to play rugby again. And in 2014, I finally got my first call up to play for the country. It was during Asia Rugby Championship Division 2 in Doha, Qatar. It was probably one of the most memorable, if not the best tournament I played, with very little time for training, because I was still working in the corporate world and still juggling for the hood, I managed to grab the top score award as well, help, helping my team emerge as a champion with over only 14 rookies. <laughs> Rabia has definitely taught me that in life, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. Number five, good things come to those who wait. In rugby, you're not going to be effective if you keep running around and trying to get involved in every aspect of the game. And if you're a winger like me, standing on the sideline, it'll be a while before you get hold on to the ball. But instead, wait for the opportunity to come and trust your teammate to do their job. In rugby as well, you need to make quick decisions. 
whether it's the right wine or the wrong wine, all that matter, you make wine. There is no room for hesitation or uncertainty in the game. I was dubbed the national hero when my two tries helped against Singapore help the country when our maiden Asia Rugby Championship Division 1 in front of our, of our home crowd. How did I did it? I was waiting on the sideline, waiting for the right moment, analyzing and watching my teammate and opponent making their move, waiting for the perfect moment where the ball would come. And when my prediction was right, I followed my instinct and ran through that area and grabbed the ball, passing not only one, but three opponents along the way. Got the ball and the rest was history. The win was more memorable because my mother was there for the very first time. She had never attended any of my games since I was a kid because she couldn't bear watching me get hurt. In life, you got to be patient. Stay calm under pressure. The decision you make will make or break you. But when you make one, make the best one and hit it 100%. Number six. Real world doesn't have padding. The only thing oh, most of people know about rugby is rugby players have little or no protection, despite being one of the most physical games in the world. We run and get the hit without little protection. Same goes in life. There is no cushion or padding to protect you from the heavy blows. Instead, you are relying on your own resilience to make it through. In rugby, you've got to make those tackles if you want to stop your opponents from scoring those tries. And that was exactly what I did. Seven minutes into our first game against UAE in this year's Asia Rugby Championship, unfortunately, my tackle was a bit too high and I suffered a concussion. The doctor told me that I couldn't be playing for the next six days and by then, the tournament was over. I was sad, but luckily we won the tournament. Nonetheless, my news of getting concussion made into the mainstream media. For the first time, rugby was covered in the radio nationwide the next day. It wasn't a story for glory though, but I mean, at least we were covered in the radio. It's not about the mistake that you made in life. It's how you recover from them. From time to time, you're going to miss those tackles. But what is important, what do you do after you miss that tackle? So that is the sixth lesson I want to share for you guys, and hopefully you can connect and be the best in life. So what next for me? Being promoted, in, being promoted from Division 1 to Premier Division, we're going to be playing with the big boys. We're going to play against Korea and Hong Kong next year. It's going to be difficult and hard for us as this is the first time we are playing at this level. The team are highly spirited and motivated to create yet another history for Malaysian rugby. We have been training since November this year. This is a photo of our route to the Rugby World Cup. If we win the Premier Division next year, we are just two steps closer to Rugby World Cup. Is it impossible? Seems like it. All I know is I'm going to give my very best to keep this World Cup dream alive. With that, I would like to end my talk with a short video of my career highlight.
Thank you.